Oops. I guess I'm going to have to move this. One of the things I like about Vidivo, ministry that we do, we're fluid. <laughs> In other words, you never know what we're going to do. We'll be over here one day, over there the next day, down there that day, moving around, always getting a different view, a different perspective, a different way of looking at things. And that's what I like about God as He works in our life is that He brings us to places, to people, to things, to circumstances that change our view. They change the perspective, the way we look at things. You know, we might, might see it one way, one day. Then we go back and look at it another day and it looks a little different. Or another year. Or maybe at the end of your lifetime. You're not the same person that you were before. And while Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I don't think you are. I could be wrong. Maybe you're set in your ways and you know, you're just unwilling to change or be changed. Now me, I'm always getting a different perspective. You know, I remember when I was young, I used to go mountain climbing and do all kinds of things, get up high, you know, and see these things and vistas off in the horizon and go after them and down in the valley and up in the mountain and down the ridge and around the river and <laughs> through the glade and over the hills to grandmother's house we go. But the older I get, I'm not climbing so many mountains anymore. Matter of fact, I'm kind of thinking about not doing those things as much. Just recently I was telling my wife that uh, I could probably ride my bike to church and it's uh, oh I don't know I think it's maybe a 20 minute drive something like that I think it's like I don't know how many miles must be 30 miles to church and I was thinking well you know I've done that in the past walked <laughs> and hitchhiked and then also ridden my bike but I'm getting to the place where it's like, yeah, I'm not so sure I want to. You know, Lordy, do you want me to or do I just want to? And that's the real reason why I want to go is because I want to, not because I should go or that it's good for them or for me. So I haven't really decided on that. So my perspective where I used to just up and go has changed. I don't want to jump on that bike necessarily, although I have enjoyed those long distance rides and they're fun. Not sure if I want to do that yet. I know in my life, as I've changed my perspective over the years, I've begun to look at my past and evaluate what kind of legacy or what kind of history I was leaving behind me. I kind of considered those things that were important back then to not be so important now. I began to look at my eternality, meaning the eternal, as being kind of important. Like, what kind of legacy? You know, the, the Bible says something interesting about when we get to heaven. It says, as we were known, we shall be known. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm wondering if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now, I have one of those kind of minds that kind of go, hmm, is that good <laughs> or is that bad? <laughs> you know, how are you known and how will you be known in heaven? Yeah, <laughs> I know, you're kind of going, I, I don't know. You know, maybe I should ask someone. Yeah, you probably should. Ask your wife first. <laughs> But seriously, since the Bible said it, I thought about it. I've been thinking about it for a long time. 
I've been thinking about that idea of legacy. What am I known for? How am I known? What am I really my characteristics, you know, as a person? I know some people say I'm argumentative. Well, yeah. <laughs> I can carry on a good argument. Just as good as the next guy. And I like arguments. I think they're better if they're more argumentative or arguments in the sense of proving a postulate or a logical conclusion. I don't really like arguing for the sake of arguing, although my sisters used to think so. I was more like, no, it's not really why. It was part of my learning process in those days. Now it's just, well, don't really like to argue. Just not, not really worth it. So I always thought, well, what am I going to be known for? Is it my nose? Well, no, I won't have this necessarily obvious feature about myself. So what will I be known for? You know, I had a vision one time of when my mother went to heaven after she left this body and went home to be with the Lord. And, uh, wow, she changed. <laughs> I was amazed. It was like... All the years and pain and suffering was gone. She still had a smile, but her face was completely wow. I mean, in a way, it was still her, but wow. Without there being all the other stuff that was part of living in this world and being a part of life. Wow, what a difference. So, I got to thinking, what am I going to be remembered for? So, as I began to think about those things, I began to change my way of approaching life. I began to look at it as a long-distance run, a long-term effect, a long-term affectation of how I'm influencing people around me, so that maybe they begin to see who I was inside, and what I really meant inside, and what I think I am inside, as opposed to what... I know I am on the outside and what other people think you see me as the outside. I tell my wife this all the time. I say, honey, I sound a shy guy. I say, man, I, I'm really not as bold as you think I am. I'm not as brassy as I really sassy, brassy, sassy, and classy. Okay, maybe leave the class out. I think I'm a class act. But you know, brassy and sassy as I think I am. Those were changes in order to survive my circumstances that maybe I put on as a external characterization of the person I was choosing to be as opposed to the person I am. So I thought about that. I got to thinking about it and I thought, well, as much as we say that social behaviors and social effects can cause the effect of changing a person's personality into certain formulas and f ways of looking at life. Is that the person or is that the results of things that the person has gone through that makes them the way they are, but is that who they are? So I got to thinking about that. In case you're wondering, yes, I've said that about five times. Because <laughs> I really did get to thinking about that. And I do a lot of thinking, so that's why I get to thinking about that. I'm doing a lot of thinking about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized most people really aren't who they think they are or who they portray themselves to be or even sometimes how they act on the outside. A lot of what people are is on the inside that they don't even completely know because they had to hide that or change that or, you know, put that person aside. You know, kind of like what they used to call the little child inside. Well, I'm not so sure about that little child idea. No, no, no. But I am more convinced about there being a person inside that's not the same as the wonderful being on the outside. No, the person that you see on the outside. Now, we could say that, you know, like old J. Vernon McGee said, you know, like the barn being painted, you know, and women doing all their makeup and stuff, or in our modern days, you know, getting a, a 
breast enlargement or reduction or having nose fixed or having tattoos put on or having whatever done you know that people do in order to make themselves think that they're more of what they are rather than just accept who they are where they are the how they are I've never seen a tree yet go get a tattoo but anyways who could figure it out so if I went by the outside you know I kind of like really mess up that person because if I see somebody that's like you know the tattooed lady I mean billion tattoos I wouldn't recognize her in heaven she won't have her tattoos <laughs> at all so it's kind of like thinking about those things and the more I got to thinking about it the more I got to thinking what really am I who am I and what will I be known for and then began to make me look at my own life and the things that I've gone through in life and to reevaluate the directions of my life to make me look at where I want to go as opposed to where I had been and how to get there you see I wanted to be known for being the person that maybe you see right now in video you know is like a born again Christian you know who was just like hey I didn't know what I'd do I just got saved you know I'm a sinner like you you know I got saved by grace and man I'm just I'm just doing and growing and moving and doing and being and experiencing. And at moments, you know, I'd like to be a Caleb, and at moments I'd like to be a Joshua, and at moments I'd like to be, well, I don't want to be Moses. <laughs> no way, man. Are you crazy? Think about that. Six million Jews? <laughs> yeah, right. No, thank you. Set them aside. Start over. That's the way I would have been with God. You know, God, you want to start over with me? All right, let's do it. But the point being is that I don't want to be someone else. I want to be me. And the more that I began to accept that fact of me being me, the more I began to realize that I have a legacy that I am. I have a personification of what he is in the form of who I am. And that form of godliness that he's made in me is becoming the legacy that you see in front of you that is me. The reality of the person that I'm becoming is the actualization of the realization of faith personified by a trusting relationship in Jesus doing what he promised me he would do from the moment I got saved. And really for me, it was about love. It was always about love. It always has been about love. I, I wanted that love that I saw everyone else had, that glow, that, oh man, that they know. I mean, they were cool. <laughs> and they still are, most of them. And so, in my age of life now, I become more open and free and expressive of life, of the joy that God has put in my life, of the peace and harmony that God has placed within my soul, of the love that I want to shed abroad to make whole those people that are desperately needing and wanting and clinging to some ounce, some scraped fingernails of faith that they could just say, oh God, if I just had a little hope because I've been there. That's the legacy I want, you know? Maybe Maybe I'm not, you know, like the Superman of the 90s, or now we're creating another one, the Superman of 2013, or the Superman of the 2000, or the Superman of the, you know, 1980s, or the 50s, or whichever it may be, because they keep reinventing Superman. But, you know, when you touch someone in the right moment at the right time, they think you're the most wonderful person in the world. And, you know, you usually walk away not saying a word about how bad you are. You just enjoy about what good God has done in them to see you for who you want to be, not for who you really are. And so, I like to take the time every day to appreciate what God has done in me, but also to see how far yet God is taking me. How much more so I want to apprehend grace and be apprehended by mercy so that I would extend more so that love that God is in his personality to everyone that I see around me that it would flow from my lips like honey and wine 
that it would just come out to everyone else around me, sublime, that they would see and know the presence of God in the very lips that I sing and bring the Word of God to them, in the way that I choose to demonstrate who He is as opposed to what I have become. Complete and effective divinity. If we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Co-resurrection. The proof that I have experienced crucifixion with Jesus is that I have a definite likeness to him. The spirit of Jesus entering me rearranges my personal life before God. The resurrection of Jesus has given him the authority to give the life of God to me. And the experiences of my life must now be built upon the foundation of his life. I can have the resurrection life of Jesus here and now, and it will exhibit itself through holiness. The idea all through the Apostle Paul's writing is that after the decision to be identified with Jesus in his death has been made, the resurrection life of Jesus penetrates every bit of my human nature. It takes the yeah, it does. It takes the omnipotence of God, his complete and effective divinity, to live the life of the Son of God in human flesh. The Holy Spirit cannot be accepted as a guest in merely one room of the house. He invades all of the house. He is its interior as well as its exterior. And once I have decided that my old man, that is my heredity of sin, should be identified with the death of Jesus, the Holy Spirit invades me and takes over me. He takes charge of everything. My part is to walk in the light and to obey all that he reveals to me. Once I have made that important decision about sin, it is easy to reckon that I am actually dead indeed to sin because I find the life of Jesus in me all the time, Romans 6.11. Just as there is only one kind of humanity, there is only one kind of holiness, the holiness of Jesus. And it is his holiness that has been given to me that God puts the holiness of his Son into me and I belong to a new spiritual order. The reality of when people get into legalism is that they're always seeking to find that holiness in others that they want in themselves. They desire to see holiness about them because they want it within them. When a person really is holy as he is holy, everything's complete. It's perfect. They see, even in the imperfections of the world around them, the perfection of God through His grace and mercy by the long sufferings of His loving kindness extended towards that imperfection to cause imperfection to put on perfection and to corruption to put on incorruption so that it becomes the perfection of God in the work that is accomplished and being processed through the dimensionality of time so that the full effect of what God is teaching would be applicable to the people that are participating in it until the day that it is brought to completion and fulfillment in that moment when now becomes always in eternity. Can I replay that? <laughs> I don't want to listen to that one. Wow, that impressed me. Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> Again, buckle up my sleeves. No, I had one of those in my mind, Rocky moments. It's like Rocky and Bullwinkle. Wow! Where did that come from? Woo! <laughs> no, seriously, but when eternity meets presentality, meaning the present moment, then the time differentiation is gone and you're living in the moment. You're living in the now. You're living with God present in you, with you, and as you are. And that's what it means to be in that place where God is as opposed to being in the place where you are because time no longer is relevant you have come to the place of being in his presence with his presence and by his presence in the immutability of what God has determined for you which is perfection that you shall be though you are not there now in your observation where he is he sees it by completion of that with which he has already done to you and in you. So, holiness comes to us, not in the sense of setting up a legalistic system or a priestly order, but in a 
differentiation of a set means a set means or a systematic structure that God has placed in his universe and in his heavens that he can determine what kind of holiness that Jesus has which is the only holiness that exists in heaven and on earth because the holiness that man has attained to and sought after was always based upon an interpretation of the realization of heaven on earth not the observation of what heaven is and earth is when God is in it and that realization of that observation <laughs> is the nature of God and what is the nature of God? Love. So holiness in its purest form and sense is love. That one way take you if you don't stop and think about that one you'll never get it but if you stop and think about it ooh, it's awesome thought but holiness any kind of holiness in its purest and greatest form is love because God is love and that's what holiness is it is the completeness of God manifest try that one on your theological cap and see how it runs for you it's awesome once you're holy you're not there because you have become holy you're there because he is holy 